Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. Today the church gives us in the gospel of the day another powerful reflection. And I'm calling it Sleeping Versus Living. This is taken from Matthew 9, 18 to 26. While Jesus was speaking to the disciples of John the Baptist, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, Jesus went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout the district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, this passage is so powerful because it shows the difference between what the world sees and what God sees. That's why I call this sleeping versus living. When we lose a loved one, for so many people, that can be devastating. And that's based out of love. We should be devastated when we lose a loved one. Even if they've been suffering for a long time, we might call it a blessing in one aspect, but we're still going to miss their warm smile, their loving embrace, their presence in our lives. But to the world, they are dead. But to God, it seems like they're only sleeping because, yes, their body is buried in peace, and we recognize that the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why the church teaches us that we are to bury the dead. And if we have a loved one who is to be cremated, once again, we shouldn't have it in a mantle in our house, but rather find it a special burial place in the ground, in a mausoleum, or in a niche. But we know that their soul is very much alive. And so for us, it's only a a farewell that we will see them again. In the case of this young girl, they saw her as dead, final, over. But Jesus saw that she's just sleeping and chooses to bring her back to life physically. Now, for some of us, we would do anything to have our loved ones come back physically. But in the eyes of God, their bodies are sleeping, but their souls are very much alive, and that our soul is brought to the throne of grace to meet God and see him in all of his majesty as we await our day of judgment. But our bodies wait for the final judgment at the end of time when they will be raised up again. So again, this notion of that our bodies are merely sleeping and that it is only God who can raise them up. In some cases, we hear of people who've had near-death experiences that God has given them a second chance at life, and we thank God for that too. But we need to see others in the way that God sees We need to understand life and death the way that God sees it. Death is not final. In one of the Eucharistic prayers at the Mass, in one of the prefaces, it says, we know that life is changed, not ended, for those who have died. So it's important for us to realize that. And that's why it's so important that we offer a funeral Mass for our loved ones, not just prayers in the funeral home or, God forbid, not even calling the priest at all to come and pray. But this funeral mass allows us to pray our loved one to the throne of grace. So when we see somebody who has passed away, if we notice that they are sleeping here on earth, but awake in heaven as they approach the throne of grace, 
May that bring us peace and consolation in the same way that it brought peace and consolation to the family of the young girl that Jesus brought from death to life. I think this passage helps us to understand the meaning of death and the importance of eternal life, that God can never be outdone in generosity, my dear people, and to understand that this is what God expects of us. So that way, when we see someone pass away, we do not see it as final. We do not see it as hopeless. But as St. Paul reminds us, we are to mourn with peace and the comfort that they are with God and that we will see them again. Which person in our life needs to hear this message right now? Perhaps it's somebody who's just lost a loved one. Perhaps you need to hear this right now, as I need to hear it. Who can we share this message of hope with and help them as they move through the stages of grief, trusting in the promise of the Lord's resurrection? The tomb is empty, Jesus is alive, and as such, we too share in that same life. He is the way, the truth, and the life that leads us to the Father. May we see things differently, sleeping versus living. For God's Playbook friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Buzzsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.